you will hear a number of different recordings and you will have to answer questions on what you hear. There will be time for you to read the instructions and questions and you will have a chance to check your work. All the recordings will be played once only. The test is in four sections. At the end of the test, you will be given ten minutes to transfer your answers to an answer sheet. Now turn to section one. Section one. You will hear a telephone conversation between an employer from the Wild Dune Spa and Resort and an applicant. First, you have some time to look at questions one to five. You will see that there is an example which has been done for you. On this occasion only, the conversation relating to this will be played first. Hello, is this John Murphy? Hi, yes it is. Hi John, this is Ed Heisenberg from the Wild Dune Spa and, and Resort, calling about your application for our lifeguard position. Do you have a few minutes to talk? Yes, absolutely. The employer says that he is calling about the application for their lifeguard position. So, lifeguard has been written in the space. Now we shall begin. You should answer the questions as you listen, because you will not hear the recording a second time. Listen carefully and answer questions one to five. Hello, is this John Murphy? Hi, yes it is. Hi John, this is Ed Heisenberg from the Wild Dune Spa and, and Resort calling about your application for our lifeguard position. Do you have a few minutes to talk? Yes, absolutely. Great, could you give me your address? Sure. My address is 45 Elsinore Court. I'm sorry, was that Eleanor? Could you spell that for me? Sure, it's Elsinore. E-L-S-I-N-O-R-E. Okay, thanks. And is this the number we should reach you at in the future? 0998885767? No, that's my home phone. But let me give you my mobile number instead. 0778962452. Call me on that one. Okay, I'll make a note of that. Could you tell me your availability? Sure. I'm usually available during afternoons or weekends. I'd prefer not to be scheduled on weeknights because I work part-time as a waiter. Problem, since we don't stay open very late anyway. And do you have any other employment experience? Yes, I've worked at a few other places. I was the baseball coach at Richmond High School last season. I see. And do you have any other experience that you would like us to note on your application? Yes. Last year I worked at the beach as a rescue diver. Rescue diver? That sounds intense. Well, it's really just like being a lifeguard, except in the ocean instead of pool. So, kind of like being a lifeguard at the world's largest pool. <laughs> I see. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions 6 to 10. Now listen and answer questions 6 to 10. So could you tell me about the relevant skills you have? I'm guessing a lot given your experience. I'm CPR certified and have two years of diving experience. Great. It sounds like you are well qualified for this position. When does your CPR certification expire? Hmm, I think in November. But let me quickly check my CPR card. Actually, it expires in October. OK, so regardless, you have it through the end of the summer. When is your ideal time to work? Since I work in the restaurant on weeknights, I like weekends best, specifically Saturday mornings. I see. We 
do already have a lot of staff available on Saturdays, but I do need an early morning shift lifeguard. How early could you work Saturday morning? I can get there by six o'clock if need be. You'll be happy to know we open a little later than that, but I'll put you down for Saturday mornings here. Oh, awesome! I can't wait to get started. How about you come in next Saturday, the twelfth? That sounds good. Great. We can figure out other shifts for you to work when you come in. Then one last thing, just out of curiosity, where did you hear about us? I heard your ad on the radio while I was driving this morning. You know, I think you're the first person who has responded to our radio ads. It's almost always people who have seen us in the newspaper. Yeah, I don't have time to read through the newspaper every morning. I have plenty of time in the car to listen to radio ads. That makes sense. Well, thanks for your time, and we'll look forward to seeing you on the twelfth. That is the end of section one. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Test three. You will hear a number of different recordings, and you will have to answer questions on what you hear. There will be time for you to read the instructions and questions, and you will have a chance to check your work. All the recordings will be played once only. The test is in four sections. At the end of the test, you will be given ten minutes to transfer your answers to an answer sheet. Now turn to section one. Section one. You will hear a woman calling the London Police Department to report a robbery. First, you have some time to look at questions one to four. You will see that there is an example which has been done for you. On this occasion only, the conversation relating to this will be played first. Hello, London Police Department. Yes, I would like to report a robbery. The woman says that she would like to report a robbery. So, robbery has been written in the space. Now we shall begin. You should answer the questions as you listen, because you will not hear the recording a second time. Listen carefully and answer questions one to four. Hello, London Police Department. Yes, I would like to report a robbery. All right, just a minute while I pull up the form. Okay, could you give me your first and last name? Anna Greig. Anna Greig, G R E G. No, Greig, G R I E G. Got it. All right. Moving on. Gender: female. Date of birth: fifteenth of March, nineteen eighty. All right. Thanks. Just a few more personal information questions, and then we can address your claim. All right. What's the address? Four Ellendale Street. That's E L L E N D A L E. All right. Ellendale Street. Yeah, we've had a lot of break-ins in that area lately. And the postal code? W five two A T. And are you a citizen of the UK? No. Okay. What type of citizenship do you have? Well, I lived in the United States for most of my life, but I am actually of Grenadian nationality. Okay. So is that the country that issued your passport? Yes. All right. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions five to ten.
Now listen and answer questions 5 to 10. And what is the crime you're reporting? I already said a robbery. Oh, right. Sorry. This is about the hundredth robbery report I've filled out today. Have you had any prior break ins? Um, in the building or just my flat? The unit below mine got broken into last year. No, just your flat. Oh, then no, not here. All right, let's see here. Can you think of anything that was out of the ordinary around your building or anyone who may have had reason to do this? No, it seemed like just a normal evening. I didn't see anyone suspicious and can't think of anyone that would target me specifically. How long has this been your place of residence? Hmm, let me think. I moved in on February 1st and it's October, so it's been about eight months already. Wow, time flies. And that is just for Ellendale, yeah? Yes, I have lived in the UK for just over one year. I see. Can you give me the first and last names of all members of the household? Actually, I live alone. OK, a y so no other occupants. And can you give me a brief account of what happened? I left to go to a dinner party at 6 pm. And when I returned at 11, I found the place ransacked and a lot of my things gone. Any sign of forced entry? Yes, the back door was wide open and it looked like someone used a crowbar to force it open. I see. And just to be clear, was the door locked when you left? Of course. Hey, you would be surprised how many reports we get where people have failed to lock their doors. Now, I need you to list any missing items valued above £200. So far, I'm missing my computer, my purse with my wallet in it, and the TV. OK, a y let's start with the computer. What is the estimated value? £500. And what is the serial number? G4168770. Thank you. And a visual description? It is a black 13 inch PEMDAS cloud book. There is an Oxford sticker on the lid. OK, a y and could you give me a description of the purse? Sure, it's a Claude Frieda shoulder bag and the material is silver coloured cloth. Price? £300. OK, a y that concludes my report. I'll submit it and we'll let you know of any developments. That is the end of section one. You now have half a minute to check your answers. You will hear a number of different recordings and you will have to answer questions on what you hear. There will be time for you to read the instructions and questions and you will have a chance to check your work. All the recordings will be played once only. The test is in four sections. At the end of the test, you will be given 10 minutes to transfer your answers to an answer sheet. Now turn to section one. Section 1. You will hear a conversation between Peter and Jim talking about some details for their shared accommodation. First, you have some time to look at questions 1 to 4. You will see that there is an example which has been done for you. On this occasion only, the conversation relating to this will be played first. Hey Jim, it's Peter. Oh hey Peter, what's up? I thought I'd call so we could hammer out the details for next year's lease. Peter says that he wants to hammer out the details for next year's lease with Jim. So, Lease has been written in the space. Now we shall begin. You should answer the questions as you listen, because you will not hear the recording a second time. Listen carefully 
and answer questions one to four. Hey Jim, it's Peter. Oh hey Peter, what's up? I thought I'd call so we could hammer out the details for next year's lease. That's a good idea. Did we ever decide on how to split the total rent? Well, I was thinking since my room is bigger, I probably should pay a little more. So I could pay a hundred and ten pounds, and you could pay eighty pounds. Does that sound okay? Considering that my old apartment cost me one hundred pounds for a smaller room, I'm definitely all right with that. Hey, I was looking at a map of the area and can't seem to find a bus stop near it. Do you know where we would catch the bus? Well, the bus is actually pretty far from us, but we have that garage that we can park our cars in. Wow, that's great! Convenient parking is hard to find, so we're lucky we have that. Okay, so we have a whole lot of things we'll need to buy when we move in. How do you want to split that up? I was wondering, do you still work at the supermarket? Yep, every Tuesday and Saturday. Would you be able to buy things from there if I sent you a shopping list? Sure, I can do that. Great. Then I can take care of whatever else we need that you wouldn't get at a supermarket. If you want, I'll pick you up from work that day, and we can go to the apartment together. Oh, that would be great. Thanks. No problem. That way we can split the cost of petrol. Works for me. It's so expensive these days, isn't it? It's downright obscene. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions five to ten. Now listen and answer questions five to ten. So let's figure out what appliances we need. Do we have a microwave? Yes, the landlord's providing that for us. Hey, do you still have that space heater though? We need one for the kitchen since it's not connected to the central heating. All right, I'll bring that. Anything else? Well, I have some dining room and living room furniture I can bring. So that should take care of most of the big stuff. You know what we do need, though. Could you bring a toaster? I actually don't have one. It doesn't come with the microwave. No, the landlord is only supplying the microwave. It would really help if you could bring one. Okay, I'll pick one up at the store. You know, I also have this cool antique rotary phone that would be a cool addition to the apartment, sort of as decoration and utility. Have to put it in the kitchen unless you want it in your room. Why not put it in the living room? The living room's too loud to have a phone conversation. The noise sort of carries. So if one person is trying to watch TV or have friends over, the person on the phone won't be able to hear. Hmm. Okay. Well, I guess kitchen it is then. Any other big things we need? That seems like everything. That's all I can think of. And of course, move-in is June the first. I can't wait. We'll be able to watch the big game in our new apartment. It's going to be awesome. Yeah, we can move in in the morning, and then Friday night we can sit back and cheer on Liverpool. I have an exam in the morning, but we'll be done around eleven a.m. and can move in after. Wait, Liverpool? You're joking, right? I thought you were a Manchester United fan. Man, you? No way. Liverpool. All the way. Oh no, I, I don't know if I can live with a Liverpool fan. That is the end of section one. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Test one. You will hear a number of different recordings 
and you will have to answer questions on what you hear. There will be time for you to read the instructions and questions, and you will have a chance to check your work. All the recordings will be played once only. The test is in four sections. At the end of the test, you will be given ten minutes to transfer your answers to an answer sheet. Now turn to section one. Section one. You will hear a man phoning to inquire about hotel information. First, you have some time to look at questions one to four. You will see that there is an example that has been done for you. On this occasion only, the conversation relating to this will be played first. Good afternoon. You're through to reception at the Island Hotel in Crete. How may I help you today? Yes. Hello there. I'm hoping to book a double room for my wife and myself for about two weeks from the 25th of April of this year. Firstly. Could you tell me whether it's particularly hot during this time? The type of room the man requires is a double one, so double has been written in the space. Now we shall begin. You should answer the questions as you listen, because you will not hear the recording a second time. Listen carefully and answer questions one to four. Good afternoon. You're through to reception at the Island Hotel in Crete. How may I help you today? Yes. Hello there. I'm hoping to book a double room for my wife and myself for about two weeks from the 25th of April of this year. Firstly, could you tell me whether it's particularly hot during this time? Yes, of course, sir. During late April and early May, the daytime temperature shouldn't exceed 19 degrees Celsius. But the weather has been rather erratic and difficult to predict in recent years, so I am unable to say for certain. Okay, that sounds good. My wife doesn't like going outside when it's very hot. I haven't booked flights yet, but I must say that I'm unfamiliar with Crete and its transport system. Does the hotel provide an airport shuttle service? Yes, sir. We provide a complimentary airport pickup service for all our guests. It takes about forty minutes to get here from the airport, but it's at least sixty minutes at rush hours, and you will be provided with a fully air-conditioned shuttle bus. Okay, excellent. In that case, do you have any rooms available for the dates I gave you? I shall have a look on the system now for you, sir. Bear with me just a moment. Yes, sir. I can see now that we have several rooms available. Would you prefer a garden view or a sea view? Well, ideally, I would like a sea view room with a balcony, but of course that depends on the difference in price. Not to worry, sir. All of our standard double rooms have ensuite facilities and a balcony. If you would like one of our sea view rooms, there is a premium of sixty euros per night. Okay. So, could you tell me the total nightly rate for a standard double room with a sea view? Yes, of course, sir. For the spring months, our rate is two hundred and sixteen euros per night. For fourteen nights altogether, this will come to three thousand and twenty-four euros. Perfect. I also read on your website that the hotel has gym and spa facilities. Are there any other facilities on offer? Yes, we have a large outdoor infinity pool overlooking the ocean, with luxury sunbeds and a poolside bar. We also have three full-size tennis courts, where we run a popular doubles tournament, with the winner receiving two all-inclusive spa day vouchers. Goodness, I shall have to brush up on my tennis skills. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions five to ten.
Now listen and answer questions 5 to 10. Are there any other activities organised by the hotel that we can partake in? It's just that it's our wedding anniversary on the 30th of June, and I would like to provide my wife with a perfect romantic getaway. I can assure you, sir, that your wife won't be disappointed. Ours is a five-star resort, which is renowned for its luxury and beauty. In terms of activities, the hotel provides thrice-weekly entertainment. On Tuesdays, guests will take a minibus and partake in learning to cook succulent fish dishes with our Michelin-starred chef, Enrique. The class will take place in a beautiful valley deep in the Cretan Hills, where guests will be treated to an intimate piano performance by our in-house concert pianist, Pedro. On Wednesdays, a select number of guests will be fortunate enough to explore the mountains by helicopter before being transported to a tropical Cretan garden by shuttle bus. Finally, on Thursdays, after a fancy dinner, we provide a spectacular fireworks display, which guests can view from the comfort of a cable car. Oh, wow! That all sounds absolutely wonderful. I shall book the room now, and then I need to look at flights so as not to become extortionate. Would you like to take my details now or later? That is the end of section one. You now have half a minute to check your answers. You will hear a number of different recordings and you will have to answer questions on what you hear. There will be time for you to read the instructions and questions and you will have a chance to check your work. All the recordings will be played once only. The test is in four sections. At the end of the test, you will be given ten minutes to transfer your answers to an answer sheet. Now turn to section 1. Section 1. You will hear a woman phoning to inquire about exhibition information. First, you have some time to look at questions 1 to 4. You will see that there is an example that has been done for you. On this occasion only, the conversation relating to this will be played first. Good morning. You're through to the events coordinator at the Birmingham City Council. How may I help you? Hello there. My husband and I are interested in purchasing tickets to the automobile exhibition, but I couldn't find many details about it on your website and I was wondering whether you could provide me with some more information. Does it open in June? The purpose of calling is to purchase tickets, so purchasing has been written in the space. Now we shall begin. You should answer the questions as you listen, because you will not hear the recording a second time. Listen carefully and answer questions 1 to 4. Good morning. You're through to the events coordinator at the Birmingham City Council. How may I help you? Hello there. My husband and I are interested in purchasing tickets to the automobile exhibition, but I couldn't find many details about it on your website, and I was wondering whether you could provide me with some more information. Does it open in June? Yes, of course, madam. The exhibition will take place during July and will showcase the history of automobiles 
from the very first commercial car in the late 1800s all the way through to the present day. Is the exhibition open for the duration of July? No, madam. The exhibition will last three days, from the 1st of July to the 3rd of July, and then the cars will be taken to another exhibition. OK. Does the exhibition focus on a certain manufacturer? No. It will showcase a wide range of manufacturers. Wonderful. I'm ever so fed up of going to these shows and only seeing one manufacturer. Are there any opportunities to sit in or even drive the cars? There will be many opportunities for you to sit in the cars. However, some of the cars will only be available to observe. We are yet to be told whether any of the antique cars will be available to drive. However, there will certainly be an opportunity to test driving some of the more modern cars on a purpose-built track. That sounds like great fun. I mustn't forget to bring my camera or my husband will never forgive me. I'm afraid to say that cameras are actually strictly not allowed to bring into the exhibition. There will, however, be a section where a professional photographer will be available to take photos of you sitting in a car in period clothing. Well, that sounds like it could be fun, but I assume the photos won't be free. On the contrary, one free photograph is included within every ticket, but each photo after this will cost five pounds. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions 5 to 10. Now listen and answer questions 5 to 10. That's a nice surprise. Not many things are free anymore. I've been asking around about the ticket prices, but I haven't yet had a definite answer. Is it correct that the tickets are £100, whether you buy them now or on arrival? I'm afraid not. If you buy the ticket in advance, the price is £110, but it's £165 on the door. Oh, goodness. I suppose I'd best pay for them now, then. Is it possible to buy tickets from you now over the phone? Yes, of course, madam. I'll transfer you to the box office manager, Mark Edgeworth. That's E-D-G-E-W-O-R-T-H. And he will probably need to take your credit card details and some personal details. Yes, that's fine. Before you transfer me, I just need to ask a few more questions. Will the exhibition be held in the Birmingham Exhibition Centre? I think that's where I went last time. No, madam. The Birmingham Exhibition Centre is currently undergoing some renovations, so this year all exhibitions will be held in the Summer Palace. Summer Palace? I'm not entirely sure where that is. Well, it's not too far from City Centre. Once you're in the centre, you should be able to find signs for the palace. If not, most people in Birmingham will be able to direct you. Mm, neither my husband nor I am particularly good with directions. Is there anywhere I can find this information on the internet? Our website will give you an address. Perhaps you could visit www.directions.com for more detailed information, and they should be able to provide you with step-by-step -step instructions. OK. And is this the best way to contact you, by phone? I think the most convenient way to contact us is inquiring online, which is much simpler than having to dial various different numbers to reach the right person. Unless you have any more questions, I'll transfer you now. No, that's great. Thank you for your help. That is the end of Section 1. You now have half a minute to check your answers.